What's up, Coffee Blurreds? In lieu of new guests to close out Black History Month, I thought I'd put together compilations of this podcast, Greatest Hits, which is just my favorite moments of the show so far. I've had some great conversations with some pretty fantastic coffee blurs. So most of the next two episodes will be highlights of the previous episodes that I thought were too precious to get rid of completely. With every guest in the show, we go deep, we have fun, we learn together, and through it all, I find more and more that despite my real life experiences, I'm not the only coffee blurred out there. I really hope you enjoyed these moments as much as I have. Happy Black History Month, y'all, and cheers. What? But Nikki, like, be honest, that's a really nice Afro puff. Like, just take take the bottom part off. Yeah, that's very... And I made your head so circular. It's your head so circular. Just just like mine. Just, just like mine. Let me sit down. I'm, I'm, like, I'm talking latte art, though. If I wanted to get me some latte art out of that, it didn't look like I'd be able to. Not really. But I did give you some latte art. <laughs> Just so you didn't like my my latte art, Nicole. How what type of milk are you? I don't. I mean, I I go with oat milk if I do use milk. I don't usually. I don't really add anything to my coffee now. Oh, 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 she is a strong black woman. Okay, girl. <laughs> you know my head. I, it has to be some really, really good coffee for me to just drink it black. Or, well, you know what? I lied. I lied. Because I've been taking shots of cold brew, black, and I might just add um, the toffee nut flavored stevia. I might drop some toffee. Nut. See, there you go, hating again. There you go. This is what I'm talking about. Who just witnessed that hateration? Hateration, holleration, and this dancery. Where is Mary J. Blige? Come on, somebody. Because so you hating on toffee nut flavoring now? You don't like toffee nut? That's what you're trying to tell me. What is that? It's actually good. I hate stevia. I hate stevia. But that toffee nut. I was there. Nikki, Nikki, you better be glad your hair cute. Because if not, I would be like. She's a girl. I'm just showing you my see. I'm showing you my see right now because your hair is cute. But let me catch you on another day. I'm showing you mercy right now because your hair is cute. I'm sorry, what? You're showing me mercy. For what? what That's what I said. For? for me not, like, really just grilling you the way I want to grill you right now. How is it that, what do you want to grill me on? <laughs> well, Nikki, every time I say something, you have something to say. You have a lot of hateration and holleration That's going on in your dancery right is. now. That's how a conversation. Look, look, I am what kind of questions do you So, if you got something to say, I'm gonna say something back. Cause talk to you for so long. I don't know why oh I my gosh! Oh my goodness! Somebody get the the violin. 
and start playing the just no I told my old co-worker I was like I don't mind walk, working there but I just want to be able to choose who my customers are and who I work with that's exactly what I want <laughs> if I could choose my customers and the people I work with I would have stayed um but them customers are assholes and they want you to like run and do flips and whatever but you don't even know how to be nice to the person that's making coffee for you man fuck them people let me tell you it's really it don't really matter where you go because in the galleria we kind of had a mixture of everybody and we really mostly had more like Arabians, Asians, and Indians. Okay. It's the Girl. Same. Okay. Rude, rude, rude. They think that they come before all the other customers. They think y'all supposed to move at supersonic speed. When you walked in and you saw it was a line and it was seven people in front of you. I'm going to give two minutes per person. That's if they only order one drink. If they only order one drink. So if it's seven people in front of you and you're in a rush, you probably shouldn't order anything. But instead, they come and they order. And then seven minutes later, uh, excuse me, I ordered. I know what you ordered. And you can stand right over there against the wall and wait for your order because it's not ready. Uh, they all say, um, I, I want this to be a place where, you know, everyone feels comfortable. Uh, they right. don't have to say all the right things, but unless they you know, right. first acknowledge where they are messing up, I don't know. I they agree. I agree. I see what you're saying, but there are some people who really do. So I don't worry about the ones that pretend like they do, but more so... I mean, we ain't really worried about nobody. But it is great to talk about that because the ones who really do want to make their coffee shop experience more unified and they want to have a better um, retention rate with their baristas, because the thing is, baristas leave coffee shops all the time for three reasons. One, you're working us too hard and you're not paying enough. Two, the customers are rude, and you have this thing of, oh, well, whatever the customers do, it doesn't matter. Like, no, you need to put some some restrictions in here. You shouldn't just let anyone come in here, and just because they spent uh, $10, you let them talk to anyone any type of way. Um, so that's two. All working on us, not paying us enough, the rude customers, and then – the lack of not having enough hours. So it's either you're overworking us or it's not even enough for me to stay. You're giving people only like 10 hours a week and I'm trying to have like a full-time job. He is like this pour over wasn't in line yet in the order of drinks. So it hadn't been started on and this lady came out um, exactly two minutes. Like it's been two minutes. Where's my pour over? And like... My barista and this lady were having a hard time. I was uh, so I tried to explain to the lady, it, you know, it the pour over itself takes it two minutes. Apologies, there's a lie. I'm so sorry. Like, well, she said mm -hmm. two minutes. It'll take two minutes. Okay, I'm starting on it now. It's gonna be two minutes. It's like you know what? I'll just take a coffee. And okay, here's your what coffee. an attitude, right? I wanted a a medium coffee. That's too much caffeine for me. Okay. Oh my god. You could have just poured the large into a medium. Now you're going to waste it. I'll drink the large coffee, ma'am. Don't worry. Like, man, people just be... I, that, was, that, was, that was a rant. That was a yeah, that, that's my thing. That's my thing. When they come in there, they want to be so picky and specific in a rush. I understand. You want to try to drink the way you wanted it. That's cool, but if it's like a lot of at this, at that, make sure it's this temperature, that, that, and the other, you're going to have to have some patience. This is not something we're going to make in 60 seconds. So if you're trying to rush out the door to go to work or your meeting or pick up your children, 
this probably isn't what you want to do right now. Come back when yeah, you have more time, please. While I'm here, since I'm about to make more coffee, I'm going to shout out the coffee I'm using real quick. I just finished a cup yeah. of the City League coffee that they sent me. I love those people. Oh, and, oh anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, City League just sent me this Family. coffee from Ethiopia. It's the wash version. Um, I, I'm using the wash version because I got more of it, and I do like it, but I, I prefer the natural. It's, it's dope. Hey, anyway, pause. I'm about to make a second cup of coffee with ear candy. It's from Three Kids. They're in Houston. They're in Houston. Ear candy. Ear candy. They are in Houston. Thank you for like, sharing that. You know because what? I've never heard of ear candy. It, it, the, the, it's you, called Three Keys. It's called Three Keys Coffee. Ear candy is just the name of this particular coffee. Oh, Yo, okay. you would like this concept. Their concept is they don't got like a bunch of um, like bougie information on their bag. They have it on their site if you want to check it out for like the advanced coffee folks. But what they do is they pair their coffee with with jazz music. So they have a jazz playlist for all of their coffees. And they have musical notes that they pair with the coffee. <gasps> oh, wait. Wait. I do love that concept because I love okay. music. Uh -huh. I love jazz. Uh-huh. And, you know, they talk about love languages, but music is a love language, okay? And you yeah. make me a playlist. Yeah. We're in love. So now I have to go order all of them. Like my heart is slow. Yes, right you now. do. Let me get started. Your podcast is not caffeinated enough. I'm trying to um tag your name in it, but it's not coming up. Uh, I don't know how to fix that for you. I don't know what your problem is. You trying to tag me in what? <clears throat> you a post? I'm I'm posting that I'm live with you, and we're discussing coffee and shit. I don't know what are we saying. <laughs> What should I put? Coffee and whatever you want. We're talking about. I put that we are talking about being working in coffee while black. Well, that's good to know not to ever put a coffee shop across from a funeral home because I've never even thought of that. I don't even know what I'm trying to say here because that really caught me off that. guard. That was when you said random. You didn't lie. That was very very random. Um, I could see how it could be a distraction if it was like really like some hooping and hollering and rolling on the ground outside. But yeah, mm -hmm. just like you know, normal morning and people. It was, girl. It was a distraction to the customers that didn't look like. So, do you think if it was a funeral home where? Not a lot of black people went. You think it would have still been a distraction? I mean, I feel like white people did like that. Just would never have been a spot for white people. Like when you know what? Yeah, funeral homes. They have it's. I like. I don't know. I've been to like a couple white people funeral homes, and it's you. It's like just to my knowledge. They're, they're never uh, across the street from a coffee shop where people You're would, right. be, like, would they be in like full view. If it was, they wouldn't yeah. have to be uh -huh. outside. Like they'd be inside or they'd be like outside in some nice lovely park area or something. So You're I mean, right. just the fact that that was there it was probably what was so fascinating to look at. Um, man, white people would never even like be outside. I don't know. Whatever. You know what? I, I just don't think that that would even... <laughs> no, you're right, because I just have to think about it. I think about um, where I'm from, the hood that I was raised in, and... Um, I'm ready. Yes, I want to say what a decanter is, because this is what I was used to 
what a decanter is to hold liquor or wine. Okay. It says um, a decanter is a vessel usually made of glass used to serve wine. The process of decanting wine then is the act of pouring the wine from a bottle into the decanter. Simple. But it usually doesn't look like that. So let me show y'all what I'm used to a decanter looking like. Um, so when you use it for like whiskeys, right, they usually look like that. And then when you use them for wine, oh, that's super fancy. Oh, yeah, it's $300 too. Okay, so we're not gonna. Mm -mm. Let's see. I've seen one like this before. It's just a fancy way to hold your wine, but you only put the wine in there when you're about to serve it. You just don't keep wine in a decanter um, because your wine needs to be closed off from air. So you would only put it in there like before people come over and you start serving them wine. But that's a whole other thing. That's not barista talk. That's bartender talk. So we're going to go and scoop back to coffee. Yeah, that's why I said, why is it called a decanter? Because I was used to it being used for, like, liquor. Okay. That's fair. Uh-huh. Well, so I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> yes, know. it did, Jay. It did use decanter in the decanter definition. Did you, did you look up, could you look up coffee decanter? See what's so special about that? Because I know that <sighs> at least this is made to be able to get a little swirling action done when you brew the coffee into it, you swirl it up, that's the thing. Um, I don't know why they decided to, to, to take the name decanter and make it a different thing than what is used. Oh, I mean, well, that's what I do, I mean, But yeah, I guess it's a server, right? That's just what it, the basic definition of it. Uh, yeah, we'll see here if they say, what is a coffee decanter? A carafe. A glass carafe without handles. Yours has a handle. Um, used for serving wine and other drinks. I feel like maybe this has become an American thing of just making... All decanters for any liquid. There it is. America. Based on how it looks. America. Good old America. Oh, it says carafe is an American English word. Coffee pot. Thank it's you. Pot. That's what I said. I said coffee pot. I was like, so what makes it a decanter? It's not, you know what? I'll be right back. I can't. <laughs> I probably should go because I just feel like I'm gonna start talking and then it's gonna get real loud. Yeah, you should probably go. <laughs> I <laughs> oh man. That's funny. Yeah, this was fun. Um I'm so glad I was finally able to go live with you. Um I don't know how I'm gonna make coffee when I get back to Houston because I don't have a fancy machine like that, but we'll figure mm -hmm. something out. Um, thank you for the prayers, Three Keys Coffee. Um, Callie, we will talk about this situation in a private conversation. <clears throat> um, it was uh, so nice to talk to everyone and be free of children and be on live with you guys. Okay, throw back. We're not about to draw this out. We're not about to draw this out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> the way that I have seen girls get mistreated, black girls get mistreated, the way that I have been mistreated as a black girl in coffee, um, is very is very regular. And by mistreat, um, of course, I mean, a lot of things are very um, verbal most of the time. I've worked in places that have told me that I couldn't have my hair wrapped, you know, like um, very, to me, regular things, you know, 
Mm-hmm. But to other people it was like, it doesn't, it doesn't fit our mold. It doesn't fit what we want you to look like. You can't wear a head wrap because this doesn't go with our uniform. You know, um, I'm a, I'm a crop top girl. I, um, and not to, not for body shaming or anything, but just to be, feel comfortable in my skin is the best way that I can serve your customers, period, you know? But um, I've had people tell me, you know, like, and I understand certain rules and regulations also, um, especially dealing with like coronavirus and everything, right? So skin out, mm, I get it, you know? But um, I just feel like there's also a level of like reciprocity that can be, and like respect that can be, um, utilize when it comes to how people discuss individuality, like especially when it comes to like piercings or how you wear your hair or anything, you know. Um, I think that a lot of times people try to use like individuality as a crutch to like kind of mold all their people to go the same route, you know. And I don't think that that sells the coffee any less to like have us all be individuals or have us all look the same. Like it doesn't, that doesn't make a difference. Right. So I could stand here inside of with a bandana on and still know the difference between a Guatemalan coffee and Ethiopian coffee or whatever. But me wearing what I'm wearing has nothing to do with like what you're doing over here. So I kind of do, I do think that I have been affected by it enough to like kind of speak loudly about it at this point, because I just don't see enough girls kind of like wear themselves truthfully, you know, like they don't, a lot of us kind of like, um, close in, you know, a lot of us, like we don't pay attention to like, um, how comfortable we feel. We try to make other people comfortable. Even though that sounds sounds like oh yeah of course just do just like just like stop worrying about other people it's super hard and like some people are just naturally gifted at it so i don't know like there's no right or wrong answer to this but like there's definitely like qualities in both so like even if you are aggressive in wanting what you want it's not a bad thing even if people don't like you like you can still have a beautiful great life like i think so i think of like people like michelle right she is extremely like popular famous but she's also extremely like you know hated on a lot right but Mm -hmm. nobody can deny that she's she's good like she's undeniably good and i i i'm starting to realize like the more that you're yourself and you like just put yourself out there and say take it or leave it like say hey i'm black is is that a problem for you if it's not like that's fine you can be here if it is i'm sorry can't do anything about it <laughs> you know and I was sort of like sort of like you know reserved and like you know passive and like oh well I don't want to like put anybody off or I don't want to like hurt anybody like I was like that at first when it came to like being like in school growing up like and all that kind of stuff I was and then I realized at a certain point like what am I doing you know I'm not myself I I feel uncomfortable in my skin in that like I'm always worrying about what other people are thinking about me but like when it like I think that's the reason why I don't really like coffee because like when it came to coffee I want to do this because it's cool and my thought process doesn't even include anybody else you know and whether it be me bugging you five times a day uh asking hey hey what's this what's that can I do this um at a certain point like people are like impressed by like all right this guy actually cares i won't let the fact that me overthinking things will mess this up for me because i i really really like coffee this is like the first time that i actually just like something like this right and i don't want to like be like like scared or like you know reserve and i don't want to regret it right and i think a lot of times people are like oh because I'm scared that this, what, what this person will think, forget that person. That is literally just, just forget it. Like if you can't get it from them, that's fine. Write them off and find somebody that will. There is a lot of amazing black professionals who, who are just like 
extremely giving information. And if you need to contact them and they'll understand you, they'll understand like, they'll be like, oh, I was in their, your exact same position. Like if anybody asks me anything, I'm like, yes, please tell, take this, take this. And then and at a certain point, they're trying to run away. And I'm like, no, wait, hang on. I want this. I want to give you this too. <laughs> but like, it's, it's harder for you. And like sad, it's a sad, sad, sad truth. It's harder when you're black, but we can make it easier for the younger black baristas, the younger black like roasters, the younger black like people who 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 are going to come into this industry. We can make it easier on them. I'm not here to to prove myself to somebody who doesn't want to like like acknowledge me. I'm not here to do whatever. I'm just here for for like you know having fun with coffee and like you know figuring out like this life thing. If somebody is standing in my way, that's fine. You can be there. I will go around.